Hey friends, welcome back. Um, on today's project, we're gonna start to tackle the patch bay. Um, so the last video, we worked on our uh, local IO panel. Today, we're gonna start loading the um, 48 point DBX um, PB48s. Um, I've got a, uh, a little 12 space rack that I got from LM cases uh, for this specific function. Um, and we're going to load that up with a power conditioner um, for some light and uh, our local I.O. and uh, some patch bays. So um, the console as it stands at the moment um, has these little pieces of tape on here. Um, so these are any channels that are noisy or need addressed. Um, so the ones with double tape are, are basically seeing um, interference when they're on, that's basically what it looks like. All of a sudden, um, the uh, input meter will just show signal there. Um, so I, I sort of burned the console in yesterday um, and, and just let it run all day long and just saw what channels had any type of noise to them. So uh, we've got a few here. So the way that we're gonna wire this at the moment is that channels one through 24 are gonna be perfectly operational. Um, so that at least half of the console is uh, is working. And then as we uh, take channels and repair them, uh, we'll start populating 25 through 48. Um, so uh, as far as the patch bay goes, um, I'm now on my sixth revision of, of the patch bay in Excel. So um, <laughs> I uh, am, am just anxious to sort of get it all um, working, but just as a quick uh, breakdown of, in theory, how things are going to go. I've got um, 16 analog inputs that come in from the other room. Um, so from a tracking standpoint, uh, I want to be able to use that. Um, and from a mixing standpoint, um, I, I want to be able to use the console uh, without mixing, um, or excuse me, without having to repatch. So, you know, one of the reasons why the um, patch revision is taken up to Rev6 is that I wanted to maximize uh, normalization. So what I've decided is that 1 through 24 are going to be my mix channels. Um, and then um, the balance of the tracking channels are going to happen um, on the uh, right-hand side of the console. So that 1 through 24 will always be set up for mixing, and then 25 through 48 will always be set up for tracking. And if I need any more um, channels for mixing, I can just uh, break the patch with a cable on the uh, right-hand side of the console. So um, we've got that patched in. So the patch bay will, will, will run in that way so that uh, 1 through 24 is permanently patched to my Motu 24AO. And then as I change my interfaces and get more gear, um, we'll bring things over. So um, the, uh, each of the channels have a direct output. So the patch bay is going to have the uh, preamp input, the direct output of every channel, plus its insert. Um, there's a separate quarter inch uh, send and return on it that will be addressed at a patch bay. Um, and we're also going to address our groups our auxes, um, and then uh, three of the four matrices in addition to the, uh, the master out. So um, the first thing we're going to do is, is uh, get, the channel, get the channels pulled, get the console unpatched, um, and then we'll, uh, we'll load up our rack.
Okay, so we've got the back of the console patched. Or I should say we have channels 1 through 24 on the back of the console patched. And a good majority of the group section, or excuse me, the master section. Um, so, you know, it is kind of amazing um, as to how much cabling this console takes. Um, so if you look at this point, um, this is channels 1 through 24, um, and this is 96 points. So you've got insert send, insert return, uh, main input, main output on each one of these channels. Um, so it, during my wiring here, I, I did my best to, um, to loom everything so that there's, there's only three main trunk lines coming out of the back of the console. There's the, uh, this guy, which is uh, all of our signal for one through 24. Uh, the center cable, this, the silver cable is the power cable. Um, and then here's our, our master section. Um, so, you know, the interesting thing about the, uh, master section is, sorry, as I'm falling over here, um, it's all XLR, you know, obviously it's a professional console. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of things that we decided, um, what do we need? Um, so I, I am running, uh, inserts. I only have enough inserts to, do, or enough, uh, room on my patch bay, uh, to handle gr uh, groups one through eight to do an insert over them, which is, you know, which is going to be important because, uh, you know, stereo compression for drums and stuff like that, but I don't have stereo compressors for drums at the moment, so this is just uh, a luxury um, for, for future hardware expansion, so that wasn't super, super important. Um, I was able to grab the uh, left and right or the direct output of groups one and two, um, the only real reason why we would need uh, the, the group outputs or if we want to print stems, um, that would be a really easy way of printing stems is just to print the group output. So eventually we'll patch that in. Um, all of the auxes, um, I do have auxes 1 through 12 addressed. Uh, their direct outputs, um, that's going to patch directly into headphones or, you know, obviously if we're doing... Um, uh, we're doing... Um, effects units and things like that. I still need to get the inputs. Um, I still need to get the inputs, but you know, for the most part, we're good to go. We do have our matrix outputs all patched. Uh, one through five, or excuse me, one through six are patched um, and leaving seven and eight for our, uh, our, our panel. So, I mean, at this point, we're pretty good. Um, I'm going to uh, roll the, uh, the console workstation back and let us terminate this mess. Um, and in case you're wondering, this is 134 points that are going to need to be patched. So <laughs> um, when it's all said and done with the rest of the console um, in, we're going to be looking at about 235 or so points, 36 points. Um, so anyway, we're going to uh, roll the console back and uh, start the uh, path bay.
All right, everybody, we are finished up. So the rack is officially wired. Um, and here is a tour of what we've got going on. Um, signal starts in the very top row uh, with our wall inputs 1 through 8, 9 through 16. Um, I've got two uh, radial catapult snakes that are wired permanently. This is cat A1 through 4 and cat B1 through 4. Um, now this is what allows me to access these inputs on the local I.O. panel. So that if I want to uh, either do something in the control room, I can, um, or if I want to patch something to go along one of the four data lines that I have in the wall, I can do that there. Um, our console is going to be split left and right. Uh, so 25 through 40, which is right here, are going to be wired permanently for tracking. Um, so 1 through 8, 9 through 16, these are normalized right here. Um, this is signal is going to go is going to flow from here to here automatically. So that when you plug a microphone into the wall on uh, input one, it's going to go immediately to uh, channel 25 on the console. And then following that down, um, our our console outputs are going to patch directly into our interface inputs. Um, so when you plug a mic into the wall, this uh, you don't have to make a patch. This is normalized, this is normalized. Um, you plug everything in and it automatically hits an interface. Um, going down to the next bank of patches, um, this is our, our mix system right here. Um, so this is the 24AO, the Motu 24AO. So uh, these interface outputs, uh, 1 through 8, 9 through 16, and 17 through 24, um, hit the console inputs 1 through 8, 9 through 16, and 17 through 24. Um, so that when you assign something in the recorder, um, it will automatically uh, hit the console outputs. Um, the console uh, outputs and interface inputs are also addressed on uh, this bottom panel. Um, this is for if we want to split the console even further to um, uh, take uh, additional inputs for recording um, beyond just 24. Um, this is all of the uh, additional recording um, interface inputs right here. So if you look at the patch bay, uh, this is the right half of the console, uh, and this is the left half of the console. Um, there's a, a missing space right here for um, our, our inserts, uh, starting with channel 25. Um, I, that half of the console is removed, so I didn't think that it necessary to uh, buy that patch bay and wire it uh, to just have it sit here. So that's the empty space right there. Eventually, we'll move this up a space. Um, so this is just our insert, send and receive, 1 through 8, 9 through 16, and 17 through 24. Um, I've got this uh, installed right now because it's the only part of the console that is, that is active. So um, these... Uh, these are normal patch bays. Uh, these down here are open. Uh, so this is just this is just open. Um, going down, here's our, our master section of the of the console. Uh, here's our auxiliary output one uh, one through six, seven through twelve. Uh, here's our group outputs. Um, here's our headphone amp in one through six. Here's our headphone amp out one through six. Uh, this is our local I.O. panel, uh, 1 through 6 and 7 through 12. Those are these outputs right here, or inputs, whatever you want them to be. Um, this is uh, our outboard section, even though the studio doesn't really have a lot of outboard gear, just a couple of compressors, uh, de or subharmonic synth uh, delay unit. Um, this is our, um, these are our group inserts. So this is group send one, group receive one. Um, these are the uh, stereo channels of the console, 45, 46, 47, 48, um, so that we can use these for uh, returns uh, for either uh, the recorder or for um, various pieces of outboard gear. Uh, this is our matrix C3, 4, 5, and 6, and this is the main output of the console. Uh, so matrix 7 and 8 is actually hardwired to our local panel right here. Um, and matrix one two on the console is going to 
um, feed our uh, Personas central station. So again, here's our local I.O. panel, uh, matrices, uh, unbalanced quarter inch for guitars, um, uh, TRS at uh, 9 and 10. We've got four XLR in, four XLR out. Um, these are unwired at the moment, but they'll probably end up either being a um, SDI to HDMI um, over Cat5 Balan, um, <coughs> excuse me, um, so that uh, I can pass video signals through the wall. Uh, these data lines are just hard patched to the wall, uh, 9, 10, 11, and 12. This is how they're wired on the wall. And then again, here's our Cat Snake, uh, 17 through 20 and 21 through 24 that are these guys right up here. Um, so, you know, this is a very simplistic patch bay. Uh, if you've got any questions, please um, just leave a comment below. I feel like uh, patch bays are probably the most the least understood thing uh, in, in the studio. Um, so again, if you have any questions. Um, also, if you're interested in this case, um, I, I do have a um, uh, link listed below where you can pick one up. But uh, yeah, if you've got any questions, just leave us a comment below and uh, I'll be happy to answer however I can. So um, stay tuned for the next one.